Welcome to TechCast, the podcast that quenches curiosity, powered by Q&A Markham. TechCast, where we deep dive into the exciting world of technology, bringing you the latest trends, innovations, and thought-provoking discussions. Join us on this exciting journey as we explore the boundless possibilities of technology. Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another episode of TechCast powered by QA Marcom. As we gear up for the Middle East Payment Summit that's going to happen on June 11th in Dubai, we have lined up a bunch of speakers that are talking about the cybersecurity and the payment industry and the overall financial security industry. And today, I have a very special guest to have a really interesting conversation with. In my studio today, I have Ramakrishnan Balagopal, who is the Vice President Sales of Middle East and Africa at CISA. Welcome, Gopal. How are you doing? I'm doing good. What about you? I'm doing good as well. Thank you so much for uh, you know coming into the studios today, and it's our pleasure to have a conversation. So, um, for the benefit of our audience, can you just talk a little bit about CISA, uh, your presence in the Middle East and Africa, and uh, you know your journey within CISA so far? All right, so just to introduce CISA, right? So CISA is uh, basically into uh, cybersecurity. It's a pure play cybersecurity solutions company. And it's, we, we what we call it is a forensic driven cybersecurity. Mm. With the emphasis on forensics is because we, we do a lot of forensic investigations across. Okay. And the learnings that we actually get from these investigations is then percolated down to all our solutions and offerings that we do. Mm. So we are one amongst the first to know what's happening in the industry in terms of the kind of breaches that's happening. Mm. And what we try to do is also try to implement the measures to stop such incidents happening from our customers as well. Yes. So that's why we call ourselves as a forensic driven cybersecurity organization. So all our solutions are centered around that. And uh, we started off, as I said, about 16 or 17 years back. Okay. In, in the field of cybersecurity and uh, Middle East is about uh, 12 years. We started off in Bahrain and now we actually have got offices across in, Mid- in Bahrain, in UAE, in Saudi as well as in Qatar. Wow. And we are covering the entire uh, Middle East as well from these offices. That's amazing. That's amazing. And uh, so cybersecurity today is, you know, uh, getting to be a very crowded space, of course. So um, how is CISA able to differentiate in a competitive market? So. Uh, basically, as I said, we are pure play cybersecurity organization. We are in the industry, as I said, again, for the last 16 to 17 years yeah. now. And again, coming back to the forensic, so that's how we differentiate ourselves is because of the forensic capabilities that we also bring to the table and the learnings that we actually mm. get mm. is something that we actually try to implement across all our customers as well, try to make sure that they are truly secure. Okay. We do not believe in the in the concept of just being compliant or doing things for the compliance sake. We actually do it with the real intent of getting our customers secure. Mm. Uh, that's having said that, so we are also in the in the industry, as we said, uh, for where we are trying to enable the CISOs mm. so that they can sleep in peace in the night and make sure that you know CISA has has got their back. Can CISOs really sleep in peace though? I'm just kidding. <laughs> to, a, to a large extent, <laughs> right. we try to make sure that they are uh, because that's something that uh, that we we try to 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 enable our sure. customers with. Nice. And uh, what do you think? What are your thoughts of the uh, the you know the new PCI DSS version 4.0 standards? And how do you think they will impact the industry? See, I think the the, the advent of uh, 4.0 that's coming in. Uh, just to, I mean, in fact, CISA has also contributed a lot to these 4.0 development controls, of the 4.0 okay. 4.0 controls as well. <laughs> uh, so one thing that's coming up is I think it's it's more holistic in in nature. So when if somebody is going for uh, PCI 4.0, the PCI DSS 4.0 certification, it's more of a holistic approach. Mm. They're also a little more flexible in terms of how they want to put in controls in their mm. environment. Yeah. And there's a lot of emphasis on uh, aspects like multi-factor authentication, a lot mm. of SOPs that ne- that needs to be followed, a lot of uh, processes that needs to be put in place. So it's, it's actually going to make, uh, in fact, the customer more secure Correct. in the process, making sure that the end users are even the, the the people at large are more secure. They can actually do transaction in peace, mm. knowing that their transaction are more secure with, mm. if the organizations are certified with the uh, PCI DSS 4.0. Okay. So, uh, yeah. but and how does it impact uh, the the others? Is basically it's it's a little more stringent in terms of what needs to be done. But as I said, it's also flexible. Mm. But end of the day, it all it is all you know driving driving to make sure that. We are one step ahead of uh, the other cyber attacks Absolutely. that might happen and Absolutely. just wanted to make sure that uh, we are living in a digital so- 
digitally secure society as well. Yeah, digital safety, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so for CISA, I know that your MXDR solutions and DPG solutions have been very successful in Middle East and Africa. But the other business unit uh, is the CISA Institute, right. which is uh, you know very interesting. And uh, can you elaborate like what is? I mean, we there are there are like a bunch of trainings and certifications that are available. But can you elaborate on what exactly CISA Institute does? And um, you know what is the role that they play in kind of enabling uh, cybersecurity and strengthening that cybersecurity posture? So CISA's <laughs> certification is called CPSI. Okay. Uh, basically, it's also an NC accredited certification program. Okay. So it's typically a two-day, three-day program. Okay. Two days or three days, depending on on the nature of. Uh, the and this is like training. individual or company wide. It is both. That means okay. basically the certification is awarded to an individual. Individual. Okay. So companies can actually nominate their employees to take this certification, and how it actually helps is typically the CPSI workshop that we're talking about is for the payment industry. Mm. So the security measures that you need to implement in your organization is what is being uh, trained or taught about in this. Two days workshop or three days workshop so mm. you have the basic and the advanced version as well okay. so once you complete these days workshop or when you complete this training you you would be able to implement the required measures to ensure that your organization is secure and mm. it's also also meeting the the payment industry security standards okay. not just the pci but any other be it an iso or any other security standard that may be there you would be able to implement that and make sure your organization is compliant to mm. that so and to make uh, just to let you know that we have probably trained over 10,000 uh, professionals wow. on, on this uh, uh, training certificate so far. Okay. So if you mm -hmm. go and search in LinkedIn as well, you would find that many of them are CPSI certified and that's a CISA uh, flagship certification program. I think I might have seen like a lot of people yes. on their LinkedIn, uh, you know, handles saying that CPSI is certified. Yes. Okay. But is there like that certification happens on an organizational level as well? Yes. So when I said uh, organizations can nominate, so if uh, if there are organizations who want to nominate, let's say 10 to 15 people mm. to go through the certification, we, our trainer, go there and do an in-house workshop. Okay. Uh, where we can actually do it. Otherwise, we have public workshops that happens. Okay. And we also have the uh, the hybrid where we have it on online as well. That means the the members can actually take the certification program as and when is convenient mm -hmm. through the learning okay. LMS portals that that are that are available. Mm. And then once you do the the training, then you have a certification or an exam that needs to be taken within a, within a stipulated time. Okay. Once you and there's a uh, there's a cutoff mark which we, you need to minimum get through in order to get the certification. Okay, so it's serious stuff. <laughs> yes. Okay, great. So, um, what's next for CISA? Like, you've had a successful run in the Middle East market and expanding to Africa as well uh, for like 16, 17 years, you mentioned. Um, and so, what's next? Uh, the, the Obviously, the cybersecurity landscape is ever evolving. The technology landscape is ever evolving. Um, so, what is the, you know, next, you know, the future, next five to 10 years looking for CISA like? Um, and uh, are there any specific initiatives that CISA is doing that you're particularly excited about? So recently we have launched the MXTR platform, which is an extension of the MDR. We earlier had MDR. We have now launched in January, we launched MXTR, okay. which is uh, primarily for extended, it's managed extended uh, detection and response, which is a solution that we offer. And that's something that uh, that's uh, probably changing the paradigm of how um, the MDR actually works. Yeah. So, with that product in mind, and also we are also ventured into data classification. There are a lot of uh, requirement, especially with data privacy laws coming in in picture across the region. In mm -hmm. fact, GCC region, uh, there's something requirement. There's a requirement for data discovery and classification. Okay. So we have solutions around these spaces as well. And what we're also doing is making. Uh, we are actually putting our setting our foot into Saudi and Qatar. We have opened up entities there. And uh, we are also setting up a SOC center in Saudi, SOC mm -hmm. center in Saudi, so that we can actually monitor all our customers based out of Saudi itself. Okay. So we see, uh, you know, actually a big market for our MXDR and data classification or uh, data discovery pro uh, solutions that we have. Mm -hmm. And with these two uh, solutions, plus the compliance and the other testing activities that we do, uh, we have not covered enough. I think uh, with the kind of growth the, the payment industry is actually seeing right now, the uh, what especially the digital payment industry that is seeing right now, which is growing at, at I think, about 25% CHR. Mm -hmm. And so it will happen for the next five years. And with markets like Saudi opening up, yes, that's something that we are focusing on. And uh, even Qatar is opening up with time. So these are the places that we're actually focusing on. Mm -hmm. And uh, like how we have actually conquered, I think we are probably serving almost uh, top 
in fact, 100 plus banks in this in GCC region alone. And mm. you name the top 10 banks, we're actually helping them with uh, cyber security activities or mm. solutions that we offer. Mm. We want to st strengthen ourselves and we probably want to go a mile ahead, be, be the numero uno in terms of setting our solutions as CISA. Uh, being one of the, the foremost uh, front runner in making sure that the, these, especially in the, the banking and finance sector, we are helping the organizations be more secure. That's amazing. That's amazing. And I think there is no better time and place to be right now because with digital banking, with payments becoming the way it is today with, you know, you can pay through your mobile, you can pay through anything, the kind of transactions, cryptocurrency, uh, blockchain, you know, there's so much going on. Um, I think there is uh, nobody uh, more sought after than the people who can like, you know, secure your systems, make sure your money is safe, make sure your data is safe um, and make sure that the payment industry is able to flourish without the, uh, you know, risk of uh, cyber attacks and so on. So kudos to the, uh, you know, to CISA to be the, uh, you know, the true front runners and, uh, you know, policemen, I think, Absolutely. <laughs> protecting, uh, you know, all, what's important today, right, which is like, data assets digital assets absolutely so that's great thank you so much um that's all the questions that i have any any parting thoughts uh, and anything that we can expect uh uh from from the CISA? i think the ceo as well is going to be there at the middle east yes, payment so summit so he is going to talk about uh, the uh, the, fu the future of uh, digital payment in this ai world wow. especially the security the future of security very interesting uh, in in uh, the digital world with ai coming in and what needs to be done so that's going to be an interesting talk. Maybe I can advise all the viewers to be a part of it. And if, if you get a chance, good. just just be there to attend this session as well. I, I think that's going to be a very interesting session because everybody would have their ears on to know what is going to happen to the payments industry with AI coming into Absolutely. the picture. I mean, there was, it was complicated in, enough um, and how to improve the security posture in that kind of circumstance. So great. We look forward to hearing from CISA uh, more at the Middle East Payment Summit. And thank you so much, Gopal, for your time today. It thank was a you pleasure. So much. Thank Thanks. You.